Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, depending on where you are in the part of the world there. I have three different pieces of, or, or parts to uh, three different transmissions. And what I want to do is show you some things so that when you're attempting to put these transmissions together, you can look at certain things that may, uh, you may miss. It can potentially cause you an issue. Well, some will cause you an issue. Some may potentially cause you an issue. These are on three different transmissions. The first one is going to be on this 5R55SW, which is which is in Ford Explorers, Mercury Mount, uh, Mountaineers. It's in uh, Mustangs. Um, even the Lincoln, which have the 5R55N, I believe have this, and some Lincoln Aviators, this transmission is in. Well, what I have here is the pump. Okay. This is a part, these are the gears. What I'm concerned with here is this flow control valve. Now, this flow control valve, I would recommend to be replaced every time you go into that transmission with a rebuild. If you're going to rebuild it, repair it, take that pump apart and replace this flow control valve. Why? Because this has a problem with sticking down. When it sticks down, you will not move forward, you will not move reverse. And if you could see here, you can see that this is down. Let me see, he's stuck. Let's see if I can get you to see it. This is stuck in the bore. If I can move it. Well, Here's one that's not stuck. You see how high it is? The nipple is up. This nipple is down. Okay, this one should be able to spring like that. Like that. Well, this one doesn't spring. It's already at the bottom. Mm. There you go. I got it to move a little. Let's see. It's staying stuck down. Well, when it's stuck down, you won't move. I don't know what would happen if it doesn't move if it's stuck up but I do know what happened if it's stuck down what happened is the bore that this valve move up and down in starts to wear the sides of it start to wear and it sticks so make sure this valve here you replace it now you can get this valve from I use Superior I've used Sonic's got a valve a new one either one will work but make sure when you are replacing this pump that you um, replace this, or no, when you're rebuilding this pump that you replace this valve. Also, in this stator, there's a hole here. Sometimes debris get trapped in this hole and it can cause an issue so what you do take your air hole your air line and blow a hole or excuse me <laughs> blow air through this hole right here and make sure it comes out the other side okay so make sure you blow this get all the debris out if there is any if there isn't any you're good but there is then go ahead and blow it out now this is for a 5R55 um, SW transmission. Okay, this is the pump for that. 
Okay? The next thing I want you to see, this is on a 4L60E. This is an accumulator. This is the housing. This fits inside here, and this is a plastic accumulator. Now you may be tempted to reuse this accumulator. If you look at it, it looks good. Okay? But if you look on the back, see if you can see. Yeah, you should see some cracks in here. Crack there is three. One, two, and three. Cracks there. And it's cracking all the way up the back. Okay, now, if you never take this out of the housing, you would never see that crack. And then you could potentially have a problem down the line. Now, let's say that you say, okay, there is no crack on the back. How long has this been inside that transmission? Well, if you reuse it, it may start to crack within a month. It may be developing some cracks on the inside, and you don't see that. If you can, I would replace this one with an aluminum or a brand new plastic one. Either a brand new plastic piston or an aluminum plastic piston. Again, if it's in here, and it's always working fine, you'll never see those cracks because it's on the back side. Even if you're making a repair. Now this is in a 4L60E, 4L65E transmission. The next and last part that I want to show you is from a 6T70 transmission. Okay, now this particular transmission had no reverse. The, the 3.5 reverse drum was busted as it always happened. This was in the 2009 um, vehicle. Now the clutches that go underneath, that rides underneath this um, diode were slightly burnt. They weren't completely bad, but they were slightly burnt. Probably from the slipping and trying to go when something wasn't working inside the transmission. Well, I was tempted to reuse this because it moves. So, you can reuse this diode. This diode costs a hundred dollars or more, you know, unless you find a good used one. So, it was working. Stop, locked, go forward, lock. Well, I happened to turn it on the back, and that's when I saw cracks. Cracks there, crack here, cracks all around. There's, there's a, a crack right there, okay? Well, needless to say, here's one. Let's see if you can see it right there. Needless to say, I had to go and buy another diode. But I was going to reuse this. And this would have happened if um, you don't thoroughly inspect the parts that you are either rebuilding or you re or repairing. You know, when you're repairing a transmission, you reuse some of those parts. When you rebuild a transmission, there are parts that still can be reused. Okay? Because they have longer longevity than some of the other parts that's in there. To tell you the truth though, it used to be that the seals in the older transmissions were the weakest link in transmissions. Now it seems to me in today's transmissions the seals are the strongest things and the, and the steel is the weakest link because the steel parts, aluminum parts are breaking, wearing out and the seals, the lip seals are steady going on and on. You can get maybe 200,000 miles more on the lip seals. But make sure when you repair or rebuild a transmission that you thoroughly inspect the parts that you take out. Again, these are just three uh, particular transmissions that had issues that I wanted to show to you so that when you go to repair that transmission or rebuild that you can pay attention to.